This is Russia's wide-ranging crackdown on independent media in action. On July the 28th, police raided the home of Raman Dabrakhotov, chief editor of The Insider, an investigative website. It was just one of a series of raids and legal assaults against media critical of the Kremlin that have been gaining in intensity ahead of parliamentary elections in September. <laughs> The insider was listed as a foreign agent under a sweeping Russian law five days previously, as was Dabrakhotov personally. The website has worked on investigations that presented powerful evidence of Russia's military presence in eastern Ukraine, its role in shooting down Malaysian Airlines Flight 17, and involvement in the poisoning of opposition leader Alexei Navalny. И, судя по всему, мы не последние, мы не первые. То есть все более или менее независимые издания власти планируют уничтожить, то есть закрыть к ним доступ. A growing list of media organizations and journalists are now designated as foreign agents. They face a range of restrictions with fines or even jail terms for non-compliance. Medusa, Russia's most popular independent website, was designated a foreign agent in April. Now, all its articles must carry this long warning that it is a foreign agent. It has had to reduce its journalists' wages amid falls in advertising revenue, which it says are linked to its new status. Это политическое решение, которое задача которого сделать так, чтобы нам не просто было тяжело работать, а чтобы мы медленно умирали. Мы должны сами заработать себе деньги. Мы должны сами себе заработать на жизнь. И теперь это проблематично из-за того, что у нас есть этот великолепный, прекрасный статус. Russian language services run by RFERL and Voice of America are also designated as foreign agents. Many staff have now been moved out of Russia. RFRL has refused to pay millions of dollars in fines for not carrying the mandatory warnings and is contesting them in the courts. It's also lodged a case at the European Court of Human Rights, arguing that Russia is violating its commitment to ensure freedom of the press. RFRL freelance correspondent Vladislav Yesipenko has been behind bars since March in what RFERL president Jamie Fly has called another example of the Kremlin's campaign against independent media. <laughs> Yesipenko faces up to 18 years in prison on charges of possessing and transporting explosives in Russian-occupied Crimea. He denies the charges and says a televised confession he made about working with Ukrainian security services was made under duress. <laughs> Natalia Zubkova also suffered violence and intimidation for her work as a journalist. She was chief editor of a regional newspaper in Kisilyovsk and was focused on exposing industrial pollution. Now she's in exile in Tbilisi, Georgia, after being attacked and thrown to the ground one night. Zubkova had already reported to the police that she was being threatened, but they had refused to open an investigation. Roman Badanian is another journalist who has fled Russia. Badanian is chief editor of The Project, another investigative news site that's critical of the Kremlin. It has been muzzled by a different means, Russia's law on undesirable organisations. This is even stronger than the foreign agent legislation. Anyone working with it could be liable to criminal sanction. On July the 29th, Badanian spoke to Reuters after surfacing in New York. Понятно? 
Several journalists at the project were personally designated as foreign agents when it was declared undesirable. Shortly before this, they were denounced by pro-Kremlin activist Vitaly Baradin. On July the 23rd, hours before the insider was added to the foreign agents list, Baradin wrote an Instagram post condemning those he said were spreading disinformation for greenbacks. Today we'll hear the names of traitors to our country, he wrote, without backing up his inflammatory claims with credible evidence. Baradin is part of a broader pro-Kremlin onslaught on critical media that spreads unsubstantiated claims like this, as independent journalism and hard-hitting investigations have been reaching bigger audiences with stories of crime and corruption at the heart of Putin's government. It appears to have unleashed its toughest crackdown yet on the media.